Hello and welcome YouTubers and Doctor Who fanatics to a showcase video where I showcase all the Doctor Who merchandise I collect. And today it's all about the Doctor Who books. I'm going to be showcasing 3 past Doctor Adventures, 13 EDAs and 3 Virgin books. And as well, if you know me, of course it's going to have rest stuff in it. Yeah, no Big Finish stuff in this video. I'm just going to save that to the Big Finish collection because I have got Big Finish stuff this month, like things like the Peter Who Massacre themes, which are already coming out in April, like And You Obey Me just came out today as well. It's just things like that which I've got. Yeah, this video is all about the Doctor Who books. So I will start off with the BBC Past Doctor Adventures. So for the first PDA, it is Bunker Soldiers by... Martin Day. Now I hear some fantastic stuff on this book. Amazon and a lot of reviewers praise it. And I even hear some people saying it's even better than The Witch Hunters. And The Witch Hunters is a very loved Doctor Who book. A lot of people's favourites from the range and overall it's, re it's uh, regarded as one of the best Doctor Who books ever written. And it sounds obviously good but some people say that Bunker Soldiers is even better than The Witch Hunters. And as well, I hear that the characterization in this is so spot on. You can literally hear William Hanel, the first Doctor, in this book. But I do hear some people complain about the companions a little bit. My Stephen's characterization is a little bit off. So I'll have to see about that, because Stephen is my favourite first Doctor companion. So I'll see if I agree with that or not. And Dodo, I hear, is not used a lot in this book, which can be a positive to some people I guess. But yeah I'm really looking forward to this pseudo historical and really nice cover art here and you can see a bit of alien skin and an eye by there. It looks very interesting to me so yeah that's Bunker Soldiers by Martin Day. Next Doctor Who PDA is one of my most wanted ones I just wanted to get this one and it's Byzantium by Keith Toppin. The reason why I probably wanted to get this one because it is a prequel to the Romans and the Romans is I personally love the Romans, I know a lot of people don't really like it, but I think it's a nice fun story. And this one, Byzantium, is a little bit more of a serious tone to it, but I hear it's got some comedy as well. And yeah, it's written by Keith Toppin, who likes to collaborate with Martin Day, such as the Devil Goblins from Neptune. But yeah, I don't know too much about this plot-wise, but it interests me because it follows on from the events of the rescue where the TARDIS falls off the cliff. So yeah, we're looking forward to Byzantium by Keith Toppin. And for the final Past Doctor Adventure, it follows a trilogy, so I'm not going to read it as I like to experience stuff in an order. It is Heritage by Dale Smith. I was going to read it, but I found out it was connected to a trilogy, so I said stuff it. And yeah, this one is the second book within this trilogy, consisting of Primetime, Heritage, and Love and the Alien. As something happens in Primetime, which then that element gets expanded into Heritage, and then that goes into Love and the alien and explains why Ace is like a corpse which flashbacks to, to prime time. I do know what the trilogy is about but still I just want to read it in order just to get the full enjoyment out of it so I'm not going to bother reading Heritage or Love and the Alien before I get prime time. But yeah this one's got some very depressing ideas. I've heard this one's a really depressing Doctor Who book. And as well, the thing with the dolphin sounds a little bit odd. Yeah, it's quite a bleak and creepy cover it is. And yeah, I'm not really familiar with Dale Smith's work. His name does not ring a bell to me. I don't think he's done a lot for Doctor Who. But yeah, they were the three past Doctor Adventures, Bunker Soldiers, Byzantium, and Heritage. Now to the EDAs. So for the first EDA, it is Revolution Man by Paul Leonard. I do like Paul Leonard's writing. It's very different than any other Doctor Who writer. He has a very complex style. I know some people can't really get their head around his style because it is very confusing, it is. His books like Toy Soldiers, uh, Revolution Man as well, Last Resort, Genocide, they are pretty confusing stories. As Paul Leonard doesn't really structure stories in a linear order, like a bit like a Matrix order. But if you're familiar with Paul Leonard's writing, you can understand it, but still, there will be parts where you struggle, because sometimes I struggled a little bit. But the thing you have to do with Paul Leonard's books, you just got to continue reading it. Because if you stop and don't read it for a while, there is no hope in hell you understand it. But yeah, very nice cover as well. Quite psychedelic looking by here as well. So I'm not sure it's going to have some psychedelic elements in it. 
but I do sort of doubt it because the bio doesn't really indicate that they will have psychedelic elements, but we'll see. Next Doctor Who book by David A. McKenzie is Autumn Mist. Now I have no idea what this book's about, I know nothing on this book, so I can't really comment on this one. But David A. McKenzie, he's a good writer, from what I've read so far, he's a pretty good writer, and a lot of his books do quite interest me. The Wages of Sin I sort of got my eye on, where the Doctor goes with Joe Grant and Liz Shaw from the events after the Three Doctors. His book's always got some really interesting ideas and bios and summaries like Dark Path. Sanctuary sort of has an intriguing plot as well. Lords of the Storm. That's something about David A. McKenzie. His, his books really do draw in people. That's, got, that's definitely a positive with David A. McKenzie's work. Just the books look very interesting and the bios as well. Even though the bio here is quite brief. But it does look like a gritty war story so that sounds brilliant. Yeah, I, I have no idea with the general consensus of it. I don't know if it's loved or hated. I have no idea. Next EDA is Frontier Worlds by Peter Anglehides. He's done a little bit, like Hassal, The Four Doctors. I think he did some Beneath Summerfield stuff as well. But yeah, this one looks like it has some elements from the Seeds of Doom, which I know it doesn't feature the Chronoids, even though if it did feature the Chronoids, that'd just be absolutely wonderful. I just don't get it really, but the crinoids are just never used. Books, they haven't used them at all. Big Finish, they've only been in once. TV, they've only been once. I just don't understand it, but these monsters aren't being used, the crinoids, because they are so damn underrated. Actually, it just popped up in my head that the crinoids did appear for a short story in an 11th Doctor book, but that's about it. There needs to be more crinoid action. But yeah, Frontier Worlds, I don't know anything about this book, but it just looks like it has elements from the Seeds of Doom. And as well, it features Compassion, who I know is a little bit of a hit and miss companion. I don't know anything about Compassion. But I hear that for Compassion's character, this one's quite of a heavy story also, and I don't know, or that the character is quite integral with the plot. But I can't really remember what reviewers said about that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Frontier Worlds. But yeah, I'm reading all the EDAs in order. Gonna collect them and read them all in order. As I don't want to read them in a random order. As some of them are connected with really convoluted arcs. Such as the next one I'm gonna show you. Which is the Taking of Planet 5. And yeah, this one is connected to the Faction Paradox arc. One of the most convoluted arcs. Well, from what I've heard of anyway, even though I haven't read any of the Faction Paradox stories like Alien Bodies, Unnatural History, the massive interference which I'm dreading to get to, Taking on Planet 5, Shadows of Avalon, and then the Ancestor Cell. Yeah, really nice cover. Yeah, this book seems to be liked by some people, but there are others who find it a little bit hard to get through. Well, that's the Faction Paradox for you in a nutshell. Next book, we have another story connected to the Faction Paradox arc. It is The Shadows of Avalon by Paul Cornell. A liked Doctor Who book by many, but there are others saying it isn't a good Doctor Who book. Again, I expected this because it's connected to the Faction Paradox arc. I'm just going to guess the reason why the books hate it because it's convoluted. As it seems, the stories connected to the Faction Paradox arc are mixed opinions because the arc just seems so convoluted and yeah, the books are just going to suffer the same thing, they're just probably going to be too long, there's too much going on, and it's going to be dragged out and convoluted. But yeah, story-wise, I know nothing on this book. It's quite a nice cover with a jet and a dragon as well. I know it features Romana's third incarnation, who is full of attitude. But yeah, this one can go either way, I might like it, I might not, because I do like Paul Cornell's stuff. He is a, a love writer by many. You have to wait and see on the Shadows of Avalon. Just by looking through with it, the chapters are a little bit too long, so I don't really like that in Doctor Who books. Anyway, next Doctor Who book I quite like the look of, and I don't think it's connected to anything. Actually, I think it's just got a little bit of continuity connected to the Faction Paradox. And that's about it, but it's really just a standalone story. It is Cold Heart by Trevor Baxendale. Trevor Baxendale is a very loved Doctor Who writer. Deadstone Memorial is a very loved Doctor Who book by him. I think it's one of his best I've heard from the books overall. And as well, Prisoner of the Daleks, again, gets fantastic reviews. This one I never see talked about. This one just gets completely thrown away. 
but I do see like a small amount of people really praising it. So I think it's overshadowed by all this faction paradox nonsense. So I think this one gets a little bit overshadowed by other Doctor Who books, but the plot, it really intrigues me, really draws me in, the bio sounds absolutely fantastic as well. Definitely looking forward to this Doctor Who book. Next one we have a book by Steve Lyons, a very loved Doctor Who writer, The Space Age. Looks like a very technobabble cyberpunk sort of story again with like technology, futuristic gadgets and computer systems. It does sound pretty good, it's like my cup of tea. Again, like Cold Heart, it gets pushed away, but not a lot of people actually talk about it. Because these books are so close by the end of the Faction Paradox by big Doctor Who books. So they don't really get the attention that they actually deserve, but I don't really know if the Space Age is loved or hated, but it is by Steve Lyons, so it should be a good one, and it is a, a thin Doctor Who book, so that'll be a pretty quick read, like 250 pages, I am going to guess. It was actually a lot shorter, it was. It's 237 pages. And the next Doctor Who EDA, we have the ultimate finale. It is the Ancestor Cell. And yes, this concludes the Faction Paradox arc, which then leads into the Earth arc. What can I say about the Ancestor Cell? Well, it's probably going to be an absolute convoluted mess, because there's one thing that the Faction Paradox did wrong, is that there was multiple writers working on it, and Lawrence Miles was being miserable and moany, and he says that it was screwed over, so he written his own series on the Faction Paradox. Yeah, Lawrence Miles can come across a little bit of a dick. But maybe I'll find out his point that this might be an absolute mess, even more than interference. But yeah, we have to wait and see on the Ancestor Cell. That's going to be a very interesting review, but probably going to be a while before you will see a review on the Ancestor Cell. And yeah, if you didn't know, I said this in my Q&A, which is probably not uploaded yet. But I am going to be doing a marathon on the EDAs, because I'm not going to bother reading them in the random order. And why not? I'm just going to review them all in order from... The Eight Doctors all the way to the Gallifrey Chronicles. Will I survive it? Probably not. I think my giving up point is probably going to be interference if I can get through that convoluted mess, but we have to wait and see. So after the long convoluted arc ending with the Ancestor Cell, we have the Earth arc. And boy, am I really looking forward to this. I think this is the books that I am most excited for when I do my Eighth Doctor Adventure Marathon as all the books within this arc look absolutely fantastic. Maybe not Escape Velocity, but you never know, it could be a gem. But books like The Burning, Casual Cheese of War, Turing Test, Endgame, Father Time, they all look stunning books. And I have no idea which one will be my favorite. That's probably why I like this arc so much, because I have no idea which one would be my favorite. But if I have to guess of which Doctor Who book from the Earth arc, which will be my favourite, I would have to say it might be The Turing Test by Paul Leonard. And yeah, this was my most wanted EDA. I really wanted to get this one. It's a little pricey on Amazon, nothing crazy, but I picked it up for six quid off the wonderful eBay. And I'm happy to have this book in my collection because it was my most wanted one. I'm surprised that it's very thin, so it's going to be a very quick read. I'm probably going to fly by this in probably two days or something like that. I just got everything I want in a Doctor Who book. Cody, Turing Test, World War II, Alan Turing, encryptions, decryptions, and all that snazzy stuff. I just love that sort of stuff. So, yeah, this one is just going to be an absolute joy to read. As programming for me, it's a hobby, and I do love the Turing Tests in the Second World War. Again, I love history, especially the... Second World War is my favourite part of history. So Paul Leonard, I am expecting a 10 out of 10 book right by here. So yeah, that's the Turing Test, quite a rare Doctor Who book. Yeah, you can definitely track it down for like something like a fiver. Next Doctor Who book in the Earth arc, it is Endgame by Terence Dix. It looks more suitable to be the final story within the Earth arc, doesn't it? But it isn't. But yeah, this one features the players who were in a Doctor Who book called Players with the Sixth Doctor and Perry. Again, it looks like a really gritty war book, so this one, again, is going to really interest me, but I don't know too much about it. I know nothing on 
the players as monsters. I have no knowledge on those monsters, so I don't really know anything about this book, but from what I can see of it, it definitely looks like a very gritty war book. So yeah, that is Endgame by Terence Dix. Which I can see is um, pretty mixed opinions on Amazon, but where I look everywhere else, it seems to go down very well. Our next Doctor Who book, it is Father Time, which is the penultimate from the Earth arc. Now Lance Parkin takes a very risky approach with this Doctor Who book, and for some people they just, they don't accept it, but Lance Parkin did a risky move and they didn't like it, but a lot of people say they did like it, so it's something experimental, and experimental always divides the audience, it always does that. Like Life 34, very experimental, people love it, but there are others where people absolutely hate it and they can't stand it, and yeah, I'm actually one of those people, I find Life 34 pretty overrated. Anyway, back to Father Time, it's an experimental, it divides the crowd, so that I can really like this one, or I could turn out absolutely hating it, but from the premise, it really draws me in, and what reviewers say, if the premise draws you in, you will like it a lot. If it doesn't, then stay away from it. That's why I hear reviewers say. So yeah, it's all about if the bio interests you, then definitely pick it up. If it doesn't, don't pick it up or just miss it. Next Doctor Who book is by Stephen Cole. It is Vanishing Point. Now, Stephen Cole isn't a really love Doctor Who writer by me. I don't really like his stuff a lot. It just turns out really flat, it does. Land of the Dead, good ideas, good story, but it just turns out very flat, and that's the problem with me with Stephen Cole. His stories are just, they don't have a kick to it. And Parallel 59, that was a rather, well, apparently a rubbish novel by a lot of people, and what Stephen Cole did, he wanted to take the elements from Parallel 59, which didn't really work because the book was so convoluted and full of plots, he stuck them into Vanishing Point and did a solo work on it and apparently it wasn't even as good. But I want to try and see what Stephen Cole was trying to do by grabbing elements from Parallel 59 and putting it into a book which is much more easier to follow or something like that. I think that was Stephen Cole's intentions as when Parallel 59 was released it didn't go down very well and apparently the same thing happened with Vanishing Point but I don't really know. The uh, reviews are quite mixed, a lot of people do like this book and consider it to be an underrated piece of work and that the elements from Parallel 59 actually worked very well. We have to wait to see on that one. And final EDA, quite a late one, it follows an, a trilogy I think which is called, I remember, the Alternate Timeline Trilogy. Yeah, the BBC book saw wanted to do something like what Virgin did with the time cycle arc a little bit but they made it into a trilogy and I think that has Reckless Engineering, Infinity Race and Timeless I think but I can't remember. But anyway it is Reckless Engineering is what I have by Nick Waters. Know nothing on the book but I know it follows like another arc which seems like another convoluted arc which is the Sabath arc. I'm not too sure if Sabath is actually in this story or in this book but I've heard that it is connected to the Ark. But yeah, I don't really know anything on this Doctor Who book. So yeah, they are all the BBC books now to the Virgin books. And yes, as I said, there is a rare Doctor Who book I will be showcasing. It's probably a new adventure, it's probably a missing adventure. So the only ones it can be is things like Happy Endings, God Engine, Survival Sin, The Dying Days, The Dark Path, books like that. And yeah, I've almost got all the rare Doctor Who Virgin books. Uh, for the big guys, it's Sovala Sin, The Dying Days, and as well The Dark Path. Those are the big guys left. But yeah, I probably have one of them, or it's probably a lower rarity book like Happy Endings or God Engine. So to the Virgin books, first one, it's not a rare one, it is First Frontier by David A. McKinsey. And as well, I know the villain in this story, I don't think I should say. But yeah, David A. McKinsey does like to bring back old Doctor Who villains. But yeah, my knowledge is completely blank on this one, I know absolutely nothing. I've actually not read the bio of this book yet, so I'll probably do it after the video. But yeah, that is First Frontier. 
The next virgin book is is in this rarity section where there's a lot of rare virgin books. It starts from the almost people all the way down to the dying days. It's like a very rare section of virgin books. Sleepy by Kate Orman. Now I've got some interesting trivia on this book which probably not a lot of people will know. That I was just researching about the virgin books and this cover was actually referencing a virgin book which never happened so Mark Wilkinson the painter of this cover he wanted to reference that book it was called virus something I can't remember the last word yeah this pyramid was actually referencing a Doctor Who virgin book which never happened which featured in a pyramid so I thought that was a really interesting reference that the book sleepy with the pyramid actually references a virgin book which never happened there's some interesting trivia for you there. But yeah, looking forward to the Doctor Who book Sleepy. It's a little bit tatty because the spine, I'll show you quickly here. It can, it does look like it's going to come off the spine, this bit by here. So I have to be gentle with this book, but it isn't that rare. Yeah, I have almost completed the Virgin New Adventures. I've got a, a few more early ones I need to get. I need Time Room and Revelation. I need the highest science. Legacy, All Consuming Fire, and St. Anthony's Fire for like early ones. And there's some other ones as well which I will list which I haven't got. Human Nature, the original, I need that. The Almost People, Shakedown, Just War, War Child, Death and Diplomacy, Happy Endings, God Engine, Christmas on the Rational Planet, Return of the Living Dad, Death of Art, Damaged Goods, Sovala Sin, Eternity Weeps, and The Dying Days is what I need. To complete the Virgin New Adventure, so I'm very close, but there is a very big rare section from the Almost People to the Dying Days, and I have a big gap there. That's where I mo that's where I'm mainly missing Virgin books in that big rare section. So, so yeah, some of them are going to be difficult to track down, like the Almost People, Damaged Goods, Savar Sin, Dying Days, Happy Endings. They might be a little bit of a problem, but I will of course get them eventually. So yeah, they were Virgin Books, now to the last Doctor Who book I'll be showcasing. This one is the rare Doctor Who book now. Now it's probably a Virgin New Adventure or a Virgin Missing Adventure. It's not a BBC book, it's a Virgin book. I will give you a clue. I actually missed out on this Doctor Who book a few months ago. So I did almost track this down once, but I missed it. So. The rare Doctor Who book added to my collection, it is The Dark Path by David A. McKinsey. So there we go, I have all the big guys from the Virgin Missing Adventures, Cold Fusion, The Dark Path, and The Well-Mannered War. So I think The Virgin Missing Adventures are going to be a piece of cake now. Now I'll tell you something about The Virgin Missing Adventures, I know they're quite pricey, but I'll tell you this, they are not as rare as they're made out to be. Because I've got more on eBay, I've just got a load of them, and I got some of them for absolutely wonderful prices. They might be expensive on Amazon, but believe me, from my experience of collecting Virgin books, especially the Virgin Missing Adventures, they are not as rare as they're made out to be. Yeah, to be honest, I've had no problem with the Virgin Missing Adventures collecting the books. I haven't really had a problem with the Dark Path, the Well-Mannered War, or Cold Fusion. I have not had a problem with them. I think the biggest obstacle in my way is the Dying Days. That's going to be a bit of a, an ass to get that one. I'll have to keep my eyes on the Dying Days and Sovar Sin as well. But yeah, the Dying Days is definitely the biggest obstacle in my way. Anyway, let's go back to the Dark Path, featuring the second Doctor and the Master. That's going to be absolutely wonderful. And yes, this features as an origin story for the Master. And yeah, this book is in lovely condition. It's got a few creases by here. And that's about it. The spine is very lovely. Let's get the light on it a little bit. There we go. Spine is absolutely gorgeous. Not as gorgeous as Cold Fusion spine, which is literally perfect. That's in perfect condition, that is Cold Fusion. There's a little bit of chips here and there, but overall Dark Path is in lovely condition. If you're wondering how much I paid the Dark Path for, it was £20. I seen it on Amazon on the Tuesday. 
But where I was, I couldn't buy it, so I had a feeling that it was going to go again because in January, when I did the January showcase again, Times Champion, I did almost get the Dark Path. That would have been the best showcase of all time. Cold Fusion, Dark Path, and Times Champion. That would be just crazy. But yeah, I missed uh, the Dark Path for £25 near January. Yeah, and I thought I was going to miss it again, so I had to wait until Wednesday to get back home and... For some reason, it was still there. For £20, no one purchased it. So either they didn't notice it, or they were in the same position as I was. They just were in an area where they could not buy it. But I just find it a little bit baffling that no one purchased it when it was out in the open for so long. But yeah, I snatched it for 20 quid. so sorry if anyone else had their eyes on it. So there we go, the Dark Path for 20 quid. That's not bad at all, that isn't. For a rare Doctor Who book, pretty much half price. But yeah, I am quite low on the Virgin Missing Adventures. If you don't count the ones I've just ordered right now, I've got some fantastic bargains. You will see them in the next showcase at the end of April. So yes, to end the showcase, it is the Dark Path. So thank you very much for watching the showcase series number 44 featuring... Doctor Who books, I got a nice amount here with three past Doctor Adventures with Bunker Soldiers and Byzantium by Martin Day and Keith Toppin. Really looking forward to those Doctor Who books and then Heritage which is connected to a trilogy. I'm going to have to get Prime Time and Love and the Alien so I can experience that little trilogy. And then I got a nice bunch of EDAs, 13 EDAs, very happy to expand my 8th Doctor Adventure collection a little bit because I was pretty low on them. And yeah, also got the very convoluted Ancestor Cell. Really interested how that's going to go down. Yeah, going to be a while until that review is up because I'm going to be reviewing them in order. Even if I manage to get up to it without giving up. And as well with the Virgin books, First Frontier and Sleepy and then the big guy, the Dark Path. Very happy to have it in my collection. Now I've got the three big guys, Cold Fusion, Dark Path, and Well Man of War. There's just two more left, which is Soval a Sin and The Dying Days. There are more rare books, like Happy Endings and Damaged Goods, but I don't really count them as the big guys, like Soval Sin or The Dying Days. So, thank you very much for watching the Showcase series, and I will see you in the next one for my review of Doom Coalition 2. So, see you in that review, and of course... Have a good one.